Celestia is a boomer. Now, every time I hear a boomer, that little meme were like, okay, boomer. It here, let me give you an example. Yeah, that's the meme I'm thinking about. Oh boy. <laughs> but oh man, that always gets me whenever I hear Boomer. Welcome to Boomer Town. Population Celestia. Anon sighed. He was very bored. His fingers tapped on the side of his thigh in a vain attempt to pass the time while he waited in line. Wait, why is he waiting in line, of all things? You might ask. Well, to speak to the glorious Sun Princess, of course. Though why would he want to talk with her? Well, aren't you a nosy little thing? Obviously, you were never taught proper manners if you're so eager to get in on someone else's business. Anon was almost there. He just had to wait for the final noble to finish running his mouth before he would get a chance at asking his oh-so-important question. Anon wasn't really paying attention to what the noble was saying, only that it was about tax returns or something equally boring. He sighed, the noble that had been going on for the past hour, and he was just about to just be ready for committing various actions that he could or could not find himself a one-way ticket to Tartarus, but thankfully, thankfully, the noble was spared as the conversation began to wind down. So, what do I do, princess? She's always on that damn device and I don't know what to do. Huh? Wait, wait. Huh? What's this even about? Anon's interest was piqued, so he looked towards Celestia in an attempt to gauge what the noble was just saying. The princess looked thoughtful while sitting on her throne before shortly delivering an answer. Have you tried taking said device away from young Dewberry? Perhaps she would do better outside with the other foals, she said. And the noble shook his head. But I've already tried that. He looked towards the floor sadly. She just calls me all sorts of derogatory terms and blames the destruction of ecosystems on me and my friends. And then she goes on about calling something called an ozone layer and global warming. It's, it's all complete hogwash if you ask me. What? What? Wait, wait. What? Anon was confused. Celestia looked unsettled before she put a hoof to her chin and thought. Yes, I have heard of the concept before, but it does not make any logical sense. How can the planet be heating up if I'm so cold during the winter? The noble and many others behind Anon nodded in agreements. No, 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 it's... It's impossible, she, she can't be... Anon refused to believe it. Was... Was Celestia a... a... a boomer? Shock rocked Anon's very being. His knees began to quake as the conclusion of what Celestia had become resonated with his very soul. Was it... Was it all a lie? Was their friendship a, a fabrication? Was she just pretending... To be hip? Pretending to understand him? Anon gasped. Tears welled up in his eyes. She wasn't ironic. She truly meant the things she said about how kids these days were ruining society and how their taste in music was damaging the industry. Anon began to hyperventilate. He couldn't believe he was just now realizing. She... She... She laughed at the minion meme I, I ironically showed her on my phone, he whispered, his bottom lip trembling as the anguish came over him. He fell to his knees, and thus his world came crashing down. Could you describe this derogatory term for me? He grit his teeth and let out a hiss as tears streamed down his green face. A choked sob was released from deep within before he threw his arms up into the air and bellowed out in pure agony. He, uh, he screams out, no, I, I, I can't scream now. He coughed as something flew in his mouth. A nun? The princess was silenced by the human who threw his finger up to point at her. I'm not, I'm not done yet, 
he said, causing the princess to blink owlishly. Anon cleared his throat and took a breath, and also said a long no, very loudly. That I can't do. Anon's pain was indescribable, the weight of Celestia's betrayal hitting him, full force. Damn you! Anon shouted, pointing at the princess once again. The princess looked confused, and pointed to herself in surprise. Yes, you! I thought you were my friend, my compadre, my homie, my broski! Anon panted as he ran out of breath, his hands clutching tightly into a fist. I thought you were my ni- He was cut off. Anon, what is the meaning of- Once more, the princess didn't get to finish as Anon jumped up from his knees and jabbed a finger into her direction, his eyes holding a murderous intent. Shut up. He paused, his finger trembling as he ready to say the final word. To have to say it to a friend. The tears doubled in intensity before he finally found the strength to say it. Shut up, Boomer! The echo of the final word reverberated through the entire castle, the power of his vocal cords comparing even to that of the royal Canterlot voice. Silence remained. Shock filled the princess's face and flooded the hearts of the other occupants. Celestia's mouth remained open for a few minutes before she finally recovered. Her ears had flattened. Anon, what, what? The sound of Anon collapsing onto his knees once more made her pause. I, I, I trusted you. Anon's voice was barely above a whisper, his eyes glued to the floor. I trusted you, he repeated, slamming his fists to the marble floor, and he began to sob. The princess didn't know how to respond. The air crackled with a magical energy before the Princess of the Night appeared, dressed up in full medieval gear and wielding a massive warhammer within her magical grasp. Have us, thee foul demon! She yelled, swinging herself around to scan for threats. Show thyself, so that we may destroy you! She looked amongst the crowd before finally stopping and looking towards her sister's throne only to find herself faced with a distraught Anon face down in a puddle of tears and her sister looking very guilty. What hath happened here, mine sister? Now... Well, now Luna was confused at this point, and Celestia shook her head, still staring at Anon. I... I, I don't know. Sir Sourberry was disclosing his concerns for his daughter and her rebellious nature when Anon had this powerful outburst. She looked up to her sister, I can't for the life of me understand why he's... he's reacted this way. She finished. Luna hummed, bringing a huff to her chin in thought, and she looked to Anon before walking over to his position and speaking down to him. Anon, what hath triggered this grief? Luna said softly. Anon sniffled and looked up towards Luna, his eyes strained red and puffy. He spoke. It's... it's your sister, Luna. She's... <laughs> She's... His eyes closed as another short sob escaped him. Luna allowed a comforting hoof to caress his back. She's... She's a boomer! He wailed. Luna recoiled in shock for a moment before narrowing her eyes and kneeling next to the downed human. Tis a serious... Serious allegation thou hast placed upon mine sister. Are, are thine sure? She whispered. He nodded before responding in a shallow tone. She's gone, Luna. He looked into her eyes. She doesn't believe in climate change. Luna scrunched her eyes, closed and recoiled once again, a shiver crawling up her spine. Tis... tis impossible. Nay, we, we do not believe it. Her eyes shot open along with her wings as she took into the air. Once, she raised well above the room she hovered in place. She spoke to her sister, who was now standing. Celestia, don't say it is true. That you have become a... Her fur prickled. A... a boomer. She spoke the words softly as if it was a curse. Celestia cocked her head. What does that mean? She asked. 
Luna shook her head in shock and whispered to herself, Uneducated in the knowings of basic terminology. The first signs of a boomer. What? Celestia asked. Luna still wasn't convinced, so she asked more questions. Celestia, what is global warming? Celestia shrugged. A hoax, of course, she responded. Luna pressed on through the pain, holding onto the thought that maybe, maybe, there was a chance. Celestia, de dear sister, what does thou think of mine collection of limited edition Daring Do figurines? She whispered. Celestia looked, well, confused, before responding honestly. Personally, I feel it's a waste of time. I'd invest some time working towards something more useful, like a carpentry. If Faust knows, you could at least know how to use that hammer for something other than smashing. Luna hung her head low, a single tear falling from her face. I... I, I thought you... I thought you would be stronger than this, sister. Luna sniffled before continuing. This was the same... Evil your student and her friends saved me from. The same evil I swore I would never touch this earth ever again. She bore her teeth. Her face struck in a scowl as more tears fell. I... I have failed you, sister. She readied her warhammer once more. But... I... I will have failed our little ponies if I allow this evil to spread. She landed in front of her sister, who looked very, very concerned. Luna's eyes were downcast, a shadow keeping the light of her eyes hidden. You are not my sister. She hefted her hammer as Celestia took a step back. I shall let you rest once I have destroyed the evil that has plagued your soul, Celestia. She prepared to swing the hammer, but stopped herself once a thought crossed her mind. Wait. Wait, I, I can just call upon the elements to cleanse your soul without destroying you. She face huffed. Why, why, why didn't I think of that before? I don't have to kill you and you be rid of the demon that's taken control of your- Luna was interrupted by Celestia. I am not sure, Luna. I wouldn't trust these millennials to pull a chariot properly, let alone use the elements of harmony. Luna smashed her sister with a hammer, sending her through a window. Be gone, foul boomer! Thou shalt hold power here no longer! And thus, the vile boomer princess was slain. All hail the glorious Zoomer Queen. Long may she reign. Finn.